In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, a continuation of the reading from the mystical city of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda. Jesus is taken down from the cross. They approached Most Holy Mary, who, in the company of St. John and the Holy Women, stood in inconceivable sorrow at the foot of the cross. Instead of a salute, their sorrow at the sight of so painful a spectacle as that of the Divine Crucified was roused to such vehemence and bitterness that Joseph and Nicodemus remained for a time, prostrate at the feet of the Queen, and all of them at the foot of the cross, without speaking a word. All of them wept and sighed most bitterly until the Invincible Queen raised them from the ground and animated and consoled them, whereupon they saluted her in humble compassion. The most observant mother thanked them kindly, especially for the service they were about to render to their God and Savior, and promised them the reward in the name of him whose body they were to lay in the tomb. Joseph of Arimathea answered, Even now, Our Lady, do we feel in the secret of our hearts the sweet delight of the Divine Spirit, who has moved us to such love, that we never could merit it or succeed in explaining it. Then they divested themselves of their mantles, and with their own hands Joseph and Nicodemus placed the ladders to the Holy Cross. On these they ascended in order to detach the sacred body, while the Glorious Mother stood closely by leaning on the arms of St. John and Mary Magdalene. It seemed to Joseph that the sorrow of the Heavenly Lady would be renewed when the sacred body should be lowered and she should touch it, and therefore he advised the Apostle to take her aside in order to draw away her attention. But St. John, who knew better the invincible heart of the Queen, answered that from the beginning she had stood by to witness the torments of the Lord, and that she would not leave him whom she venerated as her God and loved as the son of her womb. Nevertheless, they continued to urge the expediency of her retiring for a short time until they should lower their master from the cross. But the great lady responded, My dearest masters, since I was present when my sweetest son was nailed to the cross, fear not to allow me to be present at his taking down. For this act of piety, though, it shall affect my heart with new sorrow, will in its very performance afford a great relief. Thereupon they began to arrange for the taking down of the body. First they detached the crown from the head, laying bare the lacerations and the deep wounds it had caused. They handed it down with great reverence and amid abundant tears, placing it in the hands of the sweetest mother. She received it prostrate on her knees in deepest adoration bathed it with her tears, permitting the sharp thorns to wound her virginal countenance and pressing it to her face. She asked the Eternal Father to inspire due veneration toward the sacred thorns in those Christians who would obtain possession of them in future times. In imitation of the Mother, St. John with the pious women and the other faithful there present also adored it. And this they also did with the nails, handing them first to Most Holy Mary for veneration, and afterward showing their own reverence. Then the Great Lady placed herself on her knees and held the unfolded cloth in her outstretched arms ready to receive the dead body of her son. In order to assist Joseph and Nicodemus, St. John supported the head and Mary Magdalene the feet of Christ, and thus they tearfully and reverently placed him into the arms of his sweetest mother. This was to her an event of mixed sorrow and consolation, for in seeing him thus wounded and all his beauty disfigured beyond all children of men, Psalms 44.3, the sorrows of her most chaste heart were again renewed, and in holding him in her arms and at her breast, her incomparable sorrow was rejoiced and her love satiated by the possession of her treasure. 
She looked upon him with supreme worship and reverence, shedding tears of blood. In union with her, as he rested in her arms, all the multitude of her attendant angels worshipped him, although unseen by all others except Mary. Then St. John first, and after him all those present in their turn, adored the sacred body. The most prudent mother, seated on the ground, in the meanwhile held him in her arms in order that they might satisfy their devotion. <laughs> 